In this lesson, we're going to talk about painting an early winter scene. That time where it's, it's not quite all fall with the strong uh, autumn colors, but not uh, as, as, as bleak or as cool in the blues and violets as, as winter. All the seasons have a particular set of colors or color scheme to them, and that in between fall and winter has maybe a bit more variety. You have your bare trees, bare branches, and then you have trees with still some foliage on them. There's still a lot of color to some degree. Distant trees uh, are somewhat bare, so you have those that violet, warmer, cool violet color range to them, but then there's still some fall colors left on them. So combination of winter colors, fall colors, a little more muted. All seasons have their own set of colors, but that in between fall and winter, I think, has a little more variety to it. But the focus of the lesson is to gear yourself to when you look at an image, you decide on what set of colors you want to use. The photograph can be a starting point, or if you're outside painting, bring it back in. That's a starting point along with the photograph, but you can decide how you want to take the colors. You don't want to uh, always feel like you have to paint exactly what the photograph shows. We're going to be looking at uh, the colors of an early winter landscape. Sounds a little specific, but there's that time before it's a, a, a deep freeze winter and just in the middle of autumn where all the bright colors are. You get a little combination of both. You get some of the uh, fall colors, some of the winter colors, and it's almost a totally different palette of uh, colors to use. This particular painting here is a John Carlson and he has that book, uh, John Carlson's Guide to Landscape Painting. If you haven't read it by now, I would suggest it. It's one of those books that when you, you read it the first time, after you go out and uh, practice what it says a few times, then reread it, starts to make more sense. And I reread this book often, just pick chapters now at a time and just reread them. There's a lot of information there. You know, in the summer we have a variety of greens, same thing in the spring. Fall, everything turns in orange, yellow. But it's the between winter and fall when you get a variety of, of colors. You can have some greens, you can have fall colors, you can have a little bit of snow maybe, but a variety of colors. And it helps to focus on certain colors, not just copy what you see. But I'm thinking in terms here of these like red violets, these warm or cool grays of the bare trees, some fall colors left, some muted oranges, blues for the you know distance, and not blue-green necessarily. Unless, you have, unless you're in an area where there's a lot of pine trees, but blue, blue-violet, maybe some blue-green, but not as much as in the summer. And a lot of muted grays, gray-violets, gray-greens, gray-yellows. So a combination of, of, of colors in here that I want to kind of focus on when I'm painting these early winter scenes. Muted and a lot of blue, red-violets, and muted oranges and yellows. Really, has it's a nice combination of colors during that time of year. There's a few other images here. This is uh, a John Fallensby. He was a contemporary of John Carlson. And here his brushwork takes over just as much as the color does. But again, he's got kind of the muted red violets, oranges, blues, some blue-green, light red violets. Again, we can say a color, but it always has to fit into the right value that we see it. In other words, the sky has a lot of color in it, but it's all very light. The distant trees in the background have a lot of variations of blue, but they're all within that middle value. You can see he breaks up the color real well. This area in here, somewhat greenish in the shadow, it's variations of blue, blue-green, violets. So it's a lot of breaking up of, of, of colors in this painting, but the overall combination again is the blue, blue-violets, muted oranges, red-violets, and it's just a real nice color combination. And I'll even just focus on certain colors that I mix on my palette that I want to show in the, in the painting. So kind of like a color scheme more than just uh, copying what I see. This is a painting by Chauncey Ryder. All these guys are somewhat the same time, early 20th century. And here he keeps his shapes very simple. There's no rendering at all. It's just massive shapes. But again, what sticks out is the color combinations. The muted blues, blue violets, muted reds, yellows, red violets. Very nice combination, especially in here. What makes it work is the values. If we go to uh, saturation 
and just lose the color still works because the values are right. And you can see how all the upright trees, darker, all the slanted hills here are a little lighter than more of the flat. And the flat road's a lot lighter, and of course sky's the lightest. Uh, but very nice value changes, and some subtle value changes in here too that give it a little bit more shape, make it look a little more complex than just one value. So within the slanted hills, he's got two or three different values. Same thing in the upright trees, a couple of different subtle value changes. And then when you get to the color, you have the same thing. You have those values with some subtle color changes. Subtle color changes in the green and the reds, yellows. That makes the painting look a bit more complex than picking just one value and one color. But the values still have to work. They have to remain the right value for that plane. This is another Chauncey Rider. Again, same time of year, kind of late autumn, early winter. Leaves are about gone. And very muted yellow greens, muted blue violets. Looking into the sun, so the sky is a, is a muted yellow. But nice colors in here, muted oranges, dark and light, greens. So nice variation of colors. But again, the values are the most important thing. I'm going to go do this one more time here. It really works well because the values are set up well. A lot of change, even in the values in that big plane of the sky and of the flat ground here, is just too big to be one value. The smaller areas like the rocks can be one, one value. Maybe two or three different colors, but one value. But the bigger that plane gets, you get a subtle value change, as well as color change. But they still read overall as a, a different values for each, for each plane. But we're playing here with a combination of colors. And if I were to set up my palette on this, I'd still have all the same colors. But I'm going to focus more on blue violets, yellow greens, yellows and oranges, maybe some red, but I want to emphasize those colors. And I can have other colors, but I want to have those colors predominant. And if he made the sky blue, it would not be as effective as it is. He's sticking with yellows and everything, yellow orange, yellow green, some yellow in the violets back in here because of the, the sunlight. So everything has kind of a, a yellow haze to it. But really think through some of the colors before we start mixing. Now the picture we're going to use, this is a uh, scene in Missouri. And again, I usually always take wider views knowing I can come in and crop later. And what I'm interested in primarily is this area. Uh, the barn, the silo, and this tree. But I really like these colors. They're that early winter color combination. So. When I crop this or zoom in, I'm going to cut out a lot of the sky because the sky is too big for what I want. And I want to zoom in. It's right about there. I want a little bit more foreground because I like the colors in the foreground. And then when I look at this, size-wise, this is a, almost a 9 by 12. That's what I'll use as a 9 by 12 canvas. So, Because I like this proportion, you know, the shape of the sky, bigger foreground, and then the massing of the trees in the barn. That all fits together well. It's not a, a square. It's not a long horizontal or a, a vertical. It's more of a shorter horizontal, 9 by 12. So that's what I'm going to go with. But I see in here a combination of yellows, you know, cad yellow light and a little violet, yellow ochre, a little bit of violet. I see some yellow greens to green, oranges, my red violets, violets. Again, I'm focusing more around the, the violets. Uh, oranges and reds, and then muted combinations of, of each. And that gives me that, that sense of the early winter. I'm going to start this a little different because when we look at this, there's not as much form and shape. There is in the tree trunks here, in the barns, but a lot of it's just um, just abstract color combinations. And that's how I want to start it. Even before I draw anything, I'm going to lay in, similar to a watercolor, lay in washes of, of all the colors that I want to use. Something that I can paint back into. That way I'm, I'm focusing more on color if I start with color. If I start with a drawing, then the color comes a little bit harder. This look, anyway, the real soft color changes of the violets, yellows, oranges, and greens. But if I start with color, 
then the color comes a little bit easier. The color becomes more of the focus.